Hey everybody, my name is Billy and welcome back to more Alan Wake. In the last episode we saw that our best friend and Sarah had crashed. Al, that was it. Al. Yes, their plane had crashed, so in this episode we are going off to rescue them and then make our way to the dam. But, just a quick notice, I figured for the rest of these Alan Wake episodes I'm going to do some post-commentary because I tend to have a lot more to talk about or I just tend to ramble on more when I'm doing post-commentary, especially for the longer episodes. Yeah, it kind of makes the commentary a tiny bit better. So yeah, that's that, and as you can see, I kicked some birdie ass. Yes, very simple. And if I'm correct, we're actually, by the end of this episode, we are, are, we are pr pretty close to the end of the game. I think. Barry, Barry that was it. His name is Al. The crash Jesus. site looked bad, but as far as I could tell, the wreck was empty. I didn't hear we pick up a nice flare gum at now and two flares, yes. Very lovely indeed. <laughs> wow. And I and we end up just following it to the well lit room and yeah. Barry! Barry! I'm surprised they actually only die the once in this thing. I thought, why not? Let's just see if we can do that, but I thought, yeah, screw it and flashbang. There was quite a few of them, and I thought the last three. So I went and boom. You know when to make an entrance, Wake. We were ready to make like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I have a different ending in mind. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I knew you'd be all right. How's that? The flaming eye of Mordor. Uh. Laugh it up, funny man. Didn't we have somewhere to go? Weaver will meet us at the dam. Yeah, actually, at that point, I actually saw one of the pieces of glowing paint outside the rocks. That's why I went there. So yeah, and it actually paid off, and I got a nice hunting rifle out of it in one of these weird smoke torch box things. Hmm. I thought uh, actually at the time I was actually deciding, shall I go with it? Shall I? Yeah. Partly, it was pretty pointless because I don't actually use a hunting rifle. I prefer the revolver. Hmm. It's pretty st standard run through basically, it's just, I actually managed to power through it pretty quickly. I got quite far in it and, and didn't realise, so yeah. Oh, Night Springs, I always thought it was Night Falls. Wow. See those lights? That's the elevator we need to take. You can't see them from the light. One of them. I'm gonna tie up the badge to the man. Torch, eh? Still surprising, eh? I don't die here. You can keep following in there, boy. Was that it? Are we safe? That was. Wow. I think we're okay. Yeah, that's all the ladies can say. Hey, wow. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. terrible myself. Whew. Anyway. Oh, 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 oh yeah, that's the point. I forgot my game decides to freeze on me. It does it again here. Stupid computer. But there we go, we get a thermos. And now for the slowest moving elevator in the world. Heads up! Here they come! Oh no! 
surprisingly I get through this quite quickly and quite easily. And somehow I actually managed to forget I had a flare gun out, but eh, it worked. All I can see on my screen at the moment is my mouse stuck in the middle of the screen and it's annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, that will now go my edit it out, so yeah. Weird this game, it really is, but it's a really good storyline, I have to say, and it gets even better. Ah, I beat you to it, Barry. See, that's how good I am actually managed to beat all the enemies be way before the elevator got there. Got off. We're hmm. almost there. There's an entrance into the dam at the top. What's the plan, Wake? Well, Weaver's crazy, but she's got something Zane left behind. Something to fix this. Gee, could you be a little more vague? Thomas? Zane? Seriously? Might as well be Paul Bunyan or Bigfoot. Yeah, Who's well, Paul Bunyan? Was real. Thankfully, this, gate, this episode is kind of cutscene heavy, so you won't have to listen to me babbling on about red and stuff careful, okay? for too long. Yes, it's just a simple mechanic really, and then there's a nice little surprise afterwards. Just a simple thing, I uh, try to run up, that happens, and I immediately thought, run to the side. You guys go ahead and find Weaver. She should be in the dam now. I'll have to make it alone through the top. Okay, wait. Good luck. Hmm. and I actually get lost because it actually takes a couple of minutes for the uh, right part to come to I tend to get lost in this episode quite a bit seriously if you got hit by one of them you would take a lot more damage than that seriously you would be conscious Especially if one of those things came flying at you. Yeah. And I took my chance there and ran. And then once again I actually get lost because I forgot to take a look at the actual point of my up top. And I kind of went the weird long way around and nearly fell off a cliff. Is it somewhere around here? Uh, again, a nice little cookie. I feel like chicken tonight. Nothing like owning some poultry. Simple flare gun and then... Kick it up. Oh, boom. Something I've realised, the birds were actually coming into me. I mean, that, that squawking thing you just heard a second ago, that was, uh, that normally means they come at you, but as soon as you start climbing the ladder, they disappear. So, so yeah. Again, weird mechanic. I was ridiculously outnumbered. The searchlight could even the odds. Hmm. And again, I don't waste any ammo whatsoever. For some reason, they decide not to move. I'm not sure if it's a game glitch or it's just how it was meant to be, but... Yeah, they decided 
just to not move at all. Because I actually saw someone in the corner, I'm thinking, oh, is that a sign or something? And then it turned out that he actually just stand still. And I couldn't get it. So, yeah, weird. It's a weird mechanic, I'm not, I, I can't, really can't tell if it's a glitch or not, because you, you can blatantly see something yellow over there, which would be one of those fishermen type people, and then when you let go, you move. So I think that might actually be a game glitch, but, well, I'll take it. Go no further. You shall not pass. You have to clear the way for me. Running, running, running. Again, it doesn't make it very clear where to go. First bit here is, but the second bit, this bit here, he's thinking, what the hell? And it's pretty easy to get lost, surprisingly, even though it's just a one thing. It's pretty easy to die as well, as you will see in a second. Oh, I have a or whatever that Again, it's not very clear on where to go, you think go straight ahead or whatever, but you know. And then you realise that there's a building right next to you. I know I'm blind. Can't really help it, but yeah. And this is this annoyed me. I mean, I stopped, but I have more than enough leverage. I literally phased through the actual grating, which was even worse. So yeah. Thankfully, it starts you off here, so it's not too bad, I suppose. It could be worse. I could have to start that all over again, but. But I know what's coming now, so I uh, kind of just went for it. Yeah. Really simple stuff. You just have to actually start running at the same time. Well. Wow. Because even though I have died quite a bit, I would have thought this game would be more of a challenge. But it's literally just follow the beam path kind of game. Those kind of games I'm not a big fan of. It's, I prefer something where you can explore more instead of just going straight to it like an RPG kind of part. Got seen in sort of thing. one long cutscene but with a bit of gameplay in it. No enemies or anything like that, so yeah. I'll just There's shut up for the time being. need changing soon and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them because it's very late and I'm tired and if you take it I won't have to do that anymore the page was autobiographical a memory from my childhood but I didn't write this it was a page written by Thomas Zane none of them were supposed to exist anymore Alan seven years old would fight sleep to the bitter end when he did sleep he soon woke up, screaming, the nightmares fresh in his mind. One evening, his mother, sitting by his bed, offered him an old light switch. She called it the clicker, and flicking the switch would turn on a magical light that would drive the beast away. 
To imbue the talisman with all possible power, she added that it had been given to her by Alan's father. Alan never knew him, and anything of his took on mythical proportions in his mind. With the clicker firmly in his hand, Alan finally slept like a baby. Now, almost 30 years later, Alan thought of this. As he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand, he took a deep breath and jumped. My mind swirled. I'd given the clicker to Alice, yet it was here. Zane had written it into existence, in a story I had written. I can get to her now. I can finish this. And that concludes that chapter. Go back. Still, nice song. Mm. It's tempted to actually just let the sit there and listen to the whole song, but I thought, yeah, better not. Get too boring for you lot, so. on Alan Wake, yeah. I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane! Thomas Zane! You're the Lady of the Light in the song! He left something behind to help me. The I like how the as he stood introduced the, the episodes like light. it's a TV series or something like that. Breath. Instead of it being a game, I mean, I there's only one other game I know I that does this. that, and that's Fantasy Star Universe. So, yeah, I think it's a really cool concept on how they do it. With each chapter, they always go to a flashback type area, don't they? Like this. And I had a hangover. Yeah. My head was about to explode, and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In one of my finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. And again, this is just one of these things, and it's my well, cutscene heavy. So, well, actually, this one's really cutscene heavy. I won't say cutscene, but sunglasses made the world look you'll see. terrible. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. And he managed to do that without taking the lid off. The pills that were some fast. Good lid. The prospect of being awake started to seem Magic. terrible again. And obviously, I just like to message explore on the machine. I thought might as well have a quick look around just in case there's another coffee thermos anywhere. But yeah, sadly, there wasn't. Hmm. Not sure how many there actually is. I think there's about 110 thermoses altogether in this game. Not entirely sure. Speaking of, I don't actually know how many manuscript pages there is. I think there's something like 80. Maybe that's something like that. I don't know. You have one new message. Ow! Are you still asleep? Wakey, wakey! You should have your show on your TiVo. If Alice wasn't too mad to record it, then she called me earlier and really chewed me out. Yeah, yeah, we went a little overboard last night. But parties are a part of this business. Ow, look. Yes, watch the show, and this is the next bit, if I decide to turn around and go the right way, um, it's actually a really cool concept of what they do. It's a shame that the, the voices don't match the people, but it's, it is like really cool what the they do with this. See? Real people. talking with the best-selling author Alan Wake about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm going to be honest here. Is that wise? No, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> but this last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. You selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. And now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the lady. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. But Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. Well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So, how's the publicity tour been treating you? Good. Great. But I gotta say, I'm glad to be back home in New York. Well, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. Well, uh, you are famous for that temper. <laughs> well, I did also write several books. <laughs> well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who have it fun. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. What's more, do the face for a Sam. And our musical guests, Poets of the Fall. Thank you. At least I've been funny. I told myself I could live with that. Hey, honey. Can you watch the show? I didn't say anything stupid if that's what you want to know. Okay, you want to ask me something? Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? Go back to sleep, Alan. Me on. Did that just sound really generic? The whole chat show. Really? What? Now just you didn't talk to me? Well, this morning fake American. I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal and you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah, you're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. No. Get a room. <laughs> Bright Falls. The present day. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. Why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Soppy bugger. Good luck, Al. My word will be get that bloody light out of my hand. flick the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I had stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, about to use the clicker. That's where I was headed.
no idea where I why he stopped. I mean, if you're on the way there, why don't you just carry on instead of stopping? Mm. But I'm pretty glad that he did stop because Alone. when I turned around, surrounded by Thomas. the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape, it was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this. Having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed, there would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set. So yeah, our next objective is actually just to get to Cauldron Lake and yeah, that's pretty much it. I just accidentally, I just checked the time there basically and we're pretty much out of time, so thank you once again for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!